really um, fun things to share with you guys today. Um, I'm going to wait for a few more people to get on here. Um, but I just want to tell if you don't know who I am, I'm Deborah Booker with Deborah Booker Designs. Um, and I am a retailer for Dixie Bell Chalk Paint and Wise Owl Chalk Paint, Prima Redesign, Roy Cycle Decoupage Tissues, Would You Bend, Posh Pigments, all of those things. And I just recently started um, my own line of decoupage tissues. And so I sent some of those to uh, Debbie a few weeks ago. So hopefully you'll be seeing some of those designs. But here's one of them. I'm going to put the camera down for a second so you can see. Hi, Sarah. How fun, you guys. Hi, Betty. So let me put the camera down for a minute. Hi, Donna. I'm one of your Czech Savvy sisters too, so it's really fun to have you guys here. This is one of the decoupage tissues that um, I designed, and um, there's a companion piece that has this background in it on the companion piece, but I did this last week, and this uh, is a Lazy Susan, and I still, still have some finishing touches to do with it. It's not completely done yet, but I just thought as you guys were coming on, it would be fun to share this with you. And I love how bright and vibrant those colors are. And um, I just got a delivery today, uh, Roy Cycles new tissues. And at the end of this video, um, I'm gonna show you guys some of those designs. To me, it's just like Christmas. I'm gonna come back up here. It's just like Christmas when these, uh, decoupage tissues come and I have some that are designs that I just did and sent off to the printers and they're supposed to get delivered tomorrow and um, I can't tell you how excited I get over it so I'm really really blessed to get to do what I love um, so I get to wake up every day and just ask myself okay what are you gonna to create today? Because it can change five times in a day. I mean, so yeah, I, I had like several projects. I mean, I, can, I never run out of projects. Um, but yesterday when I was in Costco, I already had this in my head. And so I was looking for um, like denim sneakers. And they just happen to have a pair. I took the laces out so they're not too cute, but they just happen to have a pair. And I thought, oh, that's what I'm gonna do on my live tomorrow. So I wanna show you guys something. Hello, hello to all of you. Hello, sweet friend, Michelle. Um, okay, so a few years ago, my sister and I, it was 2017, so it's been more than a few years, but we were in Strasbourg, France, and we came across a shop that had these shoes. I don't know if you guys can see how stinking cute they are. This pair of shoes has little squirrels and nuts on them. And the whole shop had these really darling shoes in it, but it was on a Sunday and the shop was closed. And so my sister and I looked them up online to find out where else we could find these shoes. So here's my camping boots. This is happy camping on this side. Hi, Debbie. And you know what? I tried to, uh, oh, I see it now. It wasn't here before. So hang on, I'm going to flip this around. So just bear with me. No, it's, it's not gonna let me do it. You know, Facebook changes their format on a daily basis and it's so aggravating. But anyway, aren't these super, super cute shoes? And you can do this yourself. Just get a pair of boots, decoupage a map on there, do a little bit of uh, painting. I mean, super cute. I'm so happy to see all you ladies, honest to goodness. So, um, I have plenty of inspiration, and I thought I would just start off with something easy so people weren't intimidated with it. So this is one that I finished earlier today. 
And this is what we're gonna do today. And this is super easy to do. Yeah, I love those boots too. Thanks, Sherry. So you could, I know you sisters really like to bling things up. I'm not a real blingy person, but you could put little rhinestones and little beads and all kinds of really fun things on these shoes. Uh, these are just perfect for me. And, um, but they were really simple and fun to do. So that's what we're gonna, thanks Linda. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So let me get this turntable out of the way. And I'm gonna put the camera down now. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so I took the laces out and what the product that I use is Dixie Belle Satin Top Coat. And that's what I decoupage with. It um, has a nice finish to it. It will protect the canvas on here. So if these do get um, muddied or anything, they're still washable. And this paint is washable. It's not gonna wash out of this, it's permanent. Um, so that's a nice feature to this. Um, and I found these shoes at Costco and they were like $19.99 and I, I didn't even try them on. I just grabbed uh, the size for me and threw it in my cart and kept on going. And so um, I did already put a coat of satin top coat over the whole thing. I didn't go over the rubber rim on it, just all the canvas area. And that's just to protect the, the finish on here and then we'll paint on top of that and then I put another satin top coat on top of that to protect it. So these are pretty well protected at this point. You can get them pretty scuffed up and they will come clean. So one of the other things that I use when I'm painting detail things like this are and fabric and I have a class coming up uh, I don't have it on my website yet, but it's coming up. It will be an online class, so it doesn't matter where you're watching from. Um, and so just, if you would subscribe to my Facebook page, and also if you would subscribe to my um, YouTube page, I would just love you forever. I'm working really hard to grow that channel. Um, but I will have a class coming up on painting a really pretty sunflower on a shirt. And so if you subscribe to my page, you'll get notification. And like I said, that will be an online class. So anybody anywhere can watch it. And anytime I'm painting on fabric, I use uh, these watercolor paint brushes. It's a really nice set and it wasn't expensive. I picked it up at Michael's. Um, but the reason for that is, is these brushes are made specially to hold moisture, to hold water, because they're watercolor brushes. And that works out really nice when you're painting on fabric, like aprons or t-shirts or shoes or whatever. Um, so I just wanted to, and I'm sorry, the camera, I usually reverse it so that the print is correct. But like I said, uh, Facebook has done some more messing around with stuff. So let's get started. Um, like I said, I use the Dixie Belle satin top coat on the shoes to protect them. And then the colors that I use today, and you could use any colors you wanted to use. I use Dixie Belle cotton and Dixie Belle daisy, which is a really nice yellow. And I used Dixie Belle in the navy, which is a true navy blue. But as I was doing this, I was thinking the blue might be really pretty if you used Bunker Hill blue, but I'd already committed, so mine is in the navy. But if you wanna do it, I would suggest uh, Bunker Hill blue. And all of these products are available on my website. So um, to start off with, Let's see. So 
So this is when you guys were all talking about uh, painting armoires, and just so you know, Dixie Bell paint and Wise Owl paint are formulated specifically for furniture, but they're great for crafting. So I go back and forth and use them for both of them um, all the time. And I just had a furniture boot camp class that was a two day class about a month ago that was an amazing class. I mean, the pieces that everybody finished in that class came out extraordinarily beautiful. And now they're all addicted to paintings, furniture, so that's pretty cool. I had a customer come in um, yesterday and she's looking at everything, everything in her house now as to, you know, how she's going to refinish it. Um, but that's the nice thing about these products is that you can use them for both medias. Okay, so I've just got a little um, palette here. And like I said, I've already put my satin top coat on here. And I always paint with a mister bottle. And so I'm just going to mist my brush and I'm going to, and a lot of you probably already know this technique, but I like to put one side of my brush in the white. And then I like to put the other side of my brush in the yellow or whatever your other color is. And this is really pretty when you're doing flowers. And I hadn't painted flowers in a long time. I used to paint them often, so this was like um, going back to school for me. But I find it best to start in the center and then work everything else around that. So I'm going to turn the shoe this way because unlike Debbie, I can't uh, paint backwards like she does. Like she has everything facing the camera and she's painting backwards. And I'm like, that is so good. She's really good. And so I have the paint loaded, one color on one side and one color on the other side. And on my little daisy flower, this is where I wanna start it. And so I'm just going to lay the brush down and it needs a little bit more moisture on it. That's better. So you get your little point at the top and you put a little pressure and can you see how the brush fans out? And then you make your stroke and you just lift up so that you get a nice little petal, just like that. And sometimes you can get more than one stroke done. Um, it seems like as you go along and your brush gets loaded up that you don't have to um, reload so often. And then for me, I have to turn it back around this way and do the same thing. Just push down and then lift back up. And you can go over it. And what that's doing is it's giving you two tone with the yellow and the white. And then I'm going to reload. Then I'm gonna put a petal here. And I actually like it best if um, the petals don't meet in the middle like that, but it'll be okay because I'm gonna put my in the navy dot there, so it's not gonna be the end of the world. And you guys, I'm not really great at answering questions as I go along, but if I don't get your question answered uh, during the live, um, I will go back and answer questions at the end. And if you guys enjoy this technique, if you would sprinkle it along to other crafters, that would be awesome. So I'm pressing down just making my stroke and lifting back up. And I have to say that's not my best little flower, but um, it's going to have to do. And so then um, I just pulled up the tongue on here. 
and did another flower here. And I did smaller ones. I did big ones and then I did smaller ones. So let me see if I can get this so that I can paint it, but you guys can still see it. Okay, so just doing the same thing with a little one. Pushing down and then lifting back up so you get that petal shape. I'm getting the rhythm of it. Let's see, how did I do the rest of them? Because I really would like to have my shoes matching. Okay, so then I did a big one over here. And I find with the bigger ones, for me, you'll have to find what works for you, but for me, if I do the top stroke and then go do the bottom petal and then fill in the others, that uh, method seems to help me get the right shape. And you know, when you're doing this, like I'm close to the edge over here, but that's okay if your design runs off of the edge. Because if this was a bolt of fabric, that's exactly what would happen. It would be right there at that cut line. And then, you know, you have a lot of grace doing flowers because in nature, they're never exactly the same. So, you know, I say we have a lot of grace when we paint flowers. They can be very individualized, very unique flowers. These are Deborah Booker design flowers. And so as we go along, um, then I'll do, I think I'll do a small one over here. Let me see if I can answer any questions. Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Aw, Sherry, you're so nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. I have, I have some really great followers and... You know, I was just feeling um, all day today uh, gratitude. I have I, my booth, my, you know, I closed down my booth at the Brass Armadillo. It just, um, I had a lot of theft there and it was a distance for me to get to, to restock. And, you know, it, it was good when it was good and then, then it was time to end. And um, I had already opened up, I had found and opened up a booth at uh, Ground Floor Artists. And I'm telling you, that place is the most amazing place. And if you haven't been there to visit, I would highly encourage you to because there are 39 working artists in that location. And it's every art medium that you can think of. And they are the most creative people. And if you're there, um, when they're there, which, you know, can be any day of the week, um, then you can ask, you can watch them work, you can ask 
questions. They all teach classes, so you can check out their class schedule. But it's the most amazing place, and I'm inspired and grateful every day that I walk in there. And uh, yesterday was so cool because uh, this was the first time they had ever done it, but yesterday they did a... It was just for the artists, the resident artists, and we all came with whatever projects we wanted to work on, but the theme uh, was collage. And I'm not good at collage. It's something I really want to learn how to do better because my brain just doesn't work like that. Um, I like things orderly, and collage is frequently like out of order, um, so I struggle with it. But there were a bunch of us there all working on our own projects, working and sharing with each other. And on the big TV screen, then they had other artists on YouTube that we were all watching. And so by the time we all left there, we were all educated and inspired in so many other art forms and I was just like overstimulated. I was so excited at the new techniques and things that I saw there and um, I can hardly wait to incorporate some of those things into my own work and that's been my experience ever since I uh, joined them there because they put out a challenge to um, all the artists to do a project that that was called bird on a log or bird on a wire and as soon as they said that my mind went to bird on a wire and so um, I got my project done and it was one of those it was really a work of love and it really challenged me to go back to my art roots and pull out art and techniques that um, I haven't done in years and I did uh, there's pictures of it and I think I posted it on um, this the savvy sister page too I did birds out of uh, copper sheeting and I etched um, the lyrics to Leonard Cohen he has a song that's called bird on a wire and so I etched those lyrics into the copper and then put it in an etching solution and then copper patinaed those birds and then I used glass work glass lamp work beads that I had made to attach the wire to the frame and then I did um, a really pretty textured finish on it Anyway, when it was all done, it's one of my favorite pieces, and now it's hanging when you come into the art gallery. It's in the gallery when you walk in the door. And they asked me what price I wanted to put on it, and I was like, I don't want to sell it. This, this is a piece that I did from, this is a part of my soul, and I don't want to sell it. So I put a ridiculously high price on it. You would think I thought it was a Van Gogh or something. Um, and if anybody wants it bad enough to spend that much money, then, oh, well, okay. <laughs> Whatever. But I'm just telling you, I just feel so blessed that I get to do what I love to do every single day. And I wish that for all of you. And my daughter came and helped me reorganize um, a few weeks ago. I didn't know everybody on the planet was reorganizing. Um, and so she came and helped me and I have to tell you, she's a good little organizer and that really did a lot for my state of mind and my creativity. I mean, it just, uh, it just was amazing how much more productive I am and how much more creative I am when it's not all in my living room and I'm looking at it 24 hours. It's in my, you know, because I sell online, all my online inventory is in my dining room slash living room. And 
I still haven't gotten it under control since Penner's. And that just drives me crazy. And then all of my lives were coming live from, um, from my family room slash kitchen, great room. And so I couldn't, you know, the only place that didn't have paint and furniture in it was my bedroom and the bathroom. That was it. I just couldn't get away from all of it. And it was really driving me crazy. And so my sweet daughter, who's such a great little organizer, came and helped me get things organized. And then we cleaned out one of the spare bedrooms. And that's where I am now. And it's so much better. I'm so much happier. So it's been interesting to watch Debbie and all of her tips for organizing. and Because I'm not a good organizer. And honestly, I don't think most artists are. I don't think that's one of our gifts. So I've just been chatting away here. Um, I'll post it. It's posted, uh, Cecile, it's actually posted on my uh, Facebook page. So if you go look back a few posts, you'll see a picture of it. Um, I love doing the etching on copper. And I've done a lot of jewelry pieces that way because I used to do, make a lot of um, jewelry. And one of my favorite things, I don't know if everybody uh, appreciates this, uh, but one of my favorite things to do is, you know, like when I etched out these, all the birds have, a, have the lyrics from uh, Leonard Cohen's song. But one bird has my favorite Bible verse written on it. And it's, you know, when it's etched on copper, it's very subtle. But I always feel like if somebody had a piece of jewelry from me or, um, you know, like that painting, then they're walking around with a piece of God with them. They might not know it, but it may touch them at some point in their life. So it's... That's just a thing that I like to do. And I guess if you're not a believer that you might not appreciate that, but that's just that's just who I am. My gifts come from God and I'm just sharing it. And I know most of you ladies are believers. my friend Fran oh oh Fran there you are um I'll have to tell it's some kind of um I can't think of it right off the top of my head but I can um send you the link for it it's a it's an acid and I pour it into a plastic container it has to be a plastic container and uh I have a fish tank motor duct taped on it to vibrate the container and then you suspend the metal that you have um, put in your re that you've put your resist on and then it vibrates it and it can take anywhere from um, 20 to 30 minutes just depending on the gauge of the, the metal. You can do it with bronze, copper, silver, um, any of those metals. And I used to do a lot of jewelry, and I and I used to do um, work in um, metal clay. And doing this piece with that bird uh, really ignited the desire to go back and do some of those pieces that I used to do. And working in a place that has, you know, 39 other artists, that really inspires you also. It really encourages you to stretch and learn and share. 
and the classroom there to teach in is gorgeous. It's a really big classroom. It's uh, really easy to spread your stuff out if you're the student. Like we did furniture in there. Um, it's just a beautiful facility and I'm just so grateful to be a part of it there. And the other artists are so nice. And their work is for sale. So when you go there, uh, outside of their own booth areas is where they usually have their for sale stuff. Let's see, how can I do this that you guys can see? There's a gallery of artwork that's for sale in the gift shop. I gotta figure out how to hold this heel so you guys see this. Thank you, Cecile, I do too. Um, I'm gonna have to stand up to get that heel. Anyway, uh, there's a gift shop. I got a little smudge on my hand and I just transferred it to the rim of my shoe, so I don't know if I can rub it out or not. Since I already top coated it, it looks like it is for the most part coming out. Okay, so um, they have a gift shop, so a lot of the artists have their things in the gift shop. I've got a couple of things in there. And um, then at each one of the artists' booths, they have finished products that they have for sale. And I tell people all the time, even if you aren't coming to see me, come see them. Because there's a lot going on there. And once a month, um, they have a live band, I forget what they're called. But if you go, to, if you look up ground floor artist and they're in Surprise, Arizona, and like their page, then you'll get notified because they're part of the art community in Arizona. And there are some amazing, amazing people there. And they do have art shows. And so even if you're not coming to see me, you should come to see what the rest of them are doing because they're doing awesome stuff. So I'm gonna put one more there. And then I think that's it for the flowers and um, we'll head on over to the dotting portion. Just looking at the comments, you guys. So, I think I just ran out of gas, you guys. I think I've told you everything I had to say. <laughs> it was really fun that you guys from the Savvy Sisters join me over here. And like I was saying, um, I'm working really hard to build my YouTube. I'm working really hard to just build my business, that's the truth. I used to have an accounting business for 20 years and I made a buttload of money doing accounting. And um, I work longer and harder in this business and make pennies compared to what I made with my accounting business, but I'm a much happier person. So I'm gonna put one little one down here. But I probably work eight to 10 hours a day, seven days a week. And I went up to my daughter's home up in Heber 
Overgaard this weekend, and I seriously thought about taking my laptop because I had so much to do, and then it was like, no, that's time with your kids. Leave the laptop at home. So I did, and I had a great time. Okay, so done with the flowers. And I'm just rinsing out my brush over here. I love these watercolor brushes. They're really great. Hi, Robin. Good to see you. Hi, Sharon. There's some of my regulars. I haven't been paying attention, you guys, because uh, I have to, like, I'm one of those people that has to focus on what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to close up this paint. And you guys, I have a couple of classes on the schedule that are coming up shortly. One is, uh, if you go to my website, uh, Cecile, that's a good question. Um, it's It takes 30 days for the paint to cure, but I put a top coat on this shoe I put the satin top coat before I started painting, and I had already done that on here so you guys didn't have to watch me do it. And then after it was all dry, I put another coat of satin top coat on here. And so it's going to be protected. So, you know, basically I could wear these shoes out tonight and feel okay about it. And just like I got a little bit of yellow up here on the rim and I, and I took my wet paper towel and wiped it off, it, it came off for me because I have that top coat on here protecting it. That's why it came off so easily. And I can see you guys just uh, sparkling these shoes up like crazy. In fact, you know, like in another lifetime, like 30 years ago, I was painting um, shoes and it seems like I was doing a lot for 4th of July, you know, with flags and stars and stripes, and they were really blinged up a lot, you guys. Um, and you could, you could be blinging these up too if you wanted to put your little rhinestones on or little pearls or, um, you girls are the queen of bling, so you do you. That's what I say. Um, decoupaging on the shoes, I would do it the same way I decoupage on everything. I would put down the satin top coat and then put down my decoupage tissue on top of that and um, then put a top, you know, another coat or two of the satin top coat to protect it on the top. So what I'm doing here is I just got a brush that has a nice big round tip to it on the other end. In fact, it's the same brush I was painting with. And I just dip it into the paint and then dip it on uh, the centers and just make my little dots. And you get really nice dots when you use the end of your brush. And you get a better dot if you dip it every time. Another point to putting the satin top coat on first is that sealed the fabric. Um, because I do paint on fabric a lot. And when I'm doing like the t-shirts and stuff, I want to, the... Uh, fibers of the fabric to absorb and pull color and and that's the way I shade with it but I didn't want that happening on here I wanted to have more control over it so it just depends on what you're painting how you're going to do it but uh, you know people are finding great chairs 
that have beautiful shapes to them, and, but the upholstery is just old and dated, and they're repainting those chairs, and they come out gorgeous. In fact, there's um, a couple of my customers, a couple of different customers have done that in the last few weeks, and they posted them up on my page. So if you uh, just look back about a week, you'll see some of those chairs, and it just kind of blows your mind away because they were really ugly chairs. And Dixie Bell and Wise Owl Paint are really wonderful paints. They're no VOCs, they're highly pigmented, so the color is very dense and goes a long, long ways. I've been a Dixie Bell retailer for four years and I just picked up Wise Owl in December and um, they're amazing paints. Okay, so I've got all my little center dots in. Just getting the center dots in just makes it look like it's... And like I said at the beginning of the video, I used In the Navy Blue. Um, I, If I was doing them over again, I'd probably use Bunker Hill Blue because that's a really pretty blue. Um, the, navy, the In the Navy Blue on these shoes comes off looking more black, uh, but I'd already committed and I didn't want to have two shoes with two different kinds of paint on them. Although that could be a thing. Nancy, yes, this is chalk paint. This is Dixie Bell chalk paint. You could do it with a Wise Owl. And there's no VOCs in this paint, so you know you can paint and not worry about fumes. Um, you can use it on children's furniture. You can be painting in the house with people in there because they're not going to smell a thing. People are, they never even notice that they're walking into a building where I'm painting until I point it out to them that there's no fumes, that they can't smell anything. Okay, so now I'm gonna do little white dots and you could do whatever color you wanted to do with your dots. And again, I'm just using the same um, tip of my brush. And then I like to do it in threes. So I just, I'm gonna put a little bit out on my tray here. You know, when you arrange flowers and um, I don't know, things look better, appear better when they're in threes. I don't know why it's a rule, but it's a good rule. So when I do my dots, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing three dots in each group. And it's totally random. It's just like, and some will be bigger than others. just however I feel like doing it. And you can see what a quick little project this is. And like I said, I got these, um, these particular shoes I got at Costco yesterday. They had them in white canvas, which would be fun to paint. And they had them in the denim and I had it already in my head. I wear a lot of denim and I already had it in my head that that's what I wanted. So I was really excited, and I think they were like $19.99. Not expensive. And I'm sure you can find them at uh, Target and Walmart, so. I'm glad you guys are loving this. Mary, um, this is a watercolor brush. This is the package. 
and it um, I picked them up at uh, Michael's because I use them when I'm painting on fabric because they hold so much uh, water and product and they weren't expensive um, they're perfect for painting on t-shirts and I will have a t-shirt class coming up I just and it will be uh, an online class so you guys, if you like my page, then you'll get notification when I get these classes booked. That's one of the reasons why I was so tempted to take my laptop to the mountains with me was because I really need to get those classes scheduled. Um, classes at Ground Floor Artists and the online classes. And then for the month of uh, July, Everything in July is going to be Christmas in July, and I have some super fantastic things to share with you guys. I'm super excited about July. And um, I've got some, I showed everybody last week on my live all the decoupage tissues that I've designed. A bunch of them came in last week. And so I showed everybody those last week, and you can go back and catch that. Um, but I have more of my designs coming tomorrow, and then I just got the new releases from Roy Cycle today. And it's just like Christmas when the doorbell rings. And so I have a few of those set aside over here to show you guys when I'm done. But I do have a website that's www.debrabucherdesigns.com. I'm the gal that sells the slick stick, uh, of course the Dixie Belle paint, a lot of decoupage tissues you guys order from me. And if you guys are waiting for the one that you all put in orders for last week, it's on order. It should be here in a day or two and then I'll ship everything out. And I would love it, you guys, if you would support another sister and like my YouTube page and my Facebook page. I'm on TikTok. I even had a TikTok video go viral. It was like the fifth one I did, and I was like, whoo, that's fun. I went kicking and screaming to TikTok. I didn't want to do that. just because of the China connection, but TikTok for social media is actually number one. And then YouTube, and then Pinterest, and then Instagram, and Facebook is coming up in the rear. Okay, you guys, what do you think? Give me some hearts if you like this. Let's stick that little tongue back in there. Hopefully it's dry enough to just tuck it back in. And then when it's good and dry, I'll put the laces back in. Thanks for the hearts, you guys. So I think it's a fun pair of shoes. I think they're and you, you can do this with wedgies. You can use this paint. You know, if you go to the Goodwill will, and you find a pair of wedgie shoes and they might not be in the best shape, but you paint them up with bright, pretty colors and then put a, a transfer on there or a decoupage on there and you've just got the cutest pair of shoes you've ever seen. So, you guys, I want to show you real quick... Um, some of the new decoupage tissues that just came in. So bear with me, I'm gonna move these shoes out of the way. I wanna get this water out of the way, I don't wanna accidentally dip a tissue in there. 
Okay, so I'm gonna bring the camera back up. Hello. There we go. Okay, so um, I'm a retailer for Roy Cycle Decoupage Tissues, and she is, in my opinion, one of the best artists out there. And I really wish I could make my brain work like her brain does. Um, and she's a wonderful person. But this is this is one of her new tissues. And there is so much going on in here, and you can cut all of these different elements out. Uh, but I just love this tissue. This is one of my favorites. So, and I don't, they, they literally just got delivered this afternoon, so I don't have them up on my website yet. That's, that's what I get to do tonight. Hi, Sharon. So this one, I just reordered. Um, I have a Harlequin that's black and white, and this one is kind of like the uh, coffee stained kind of color for the Harlequin, um, but I, I love that. And she had this one in the last release, but it was on one of the project blocks. And um, so I was really, and I used it on a jewelry box on the smaller version. So I was glad to see one of the larger versions. I'm in the process of taking some of my own designs and putting them into project blocks because you know, these big tissues are great for furniture refinishers, but the crafting people appreciate having smaller images, so I'm working on doing that with mine as well. And I can't even tell you the names of these. I was thinking of that when I was pulling them out of the package today. This one is another one of my favorites. And this works really good for crafters because these pieces are all in smaller portions like this rose right there is the same rose that uh, our flower maybe it's a peony that was on the um, purse that Debbie did last week but I, I love this this is another one of my favorites So if you see something here you like, give me a chance tonight to get them loaded up on my website. This this looks like pillow ticking to me. I think it's really pretty. And if you were doing um, a chair, you know, like an art, like, um, oh, I don't know what you call them. The chairs that have the high backs on them and the arms on the side, I can't think of what they're called. That would be super pretty to decoupage that on the back of a chair. And this is kind of an abstract art, or owl, very um, abstract. You, Chris, you've got some beautiful blue toil fabric that you want to put on rice paper. How are you going to do that? How are you going to get that design on the rice paper? So, um, this again is a smaller version. And one is in the soft um, blue, and one is in the tan. Okay, this is another one of my favorites. In the Cowgirl and the Cowboy, I have a nightstand done in each one of them, and that is a showstopper. People stop all the time. And I just have a few finishing touches to get on it, and then it'll go up for sale. Um, but I love this piece. This, 
this piece has got so many cool things going on in it. And this is one that you can cut up for smaller projects. There's a lot that you can work with on that. This is another project sheet. And again, these are all from Roy Cycle. It's got butterflies, bees, script. And I love that eyeball. She does a lot with that eyeball. And dress forms. I love also, and she has several different tissues with the dress forms on them. It's got the Harlequin down here on the bottom. Um, and she has this in a project size, and then this is a full size. But my mother was an amazing seamstress, and uh, she would take me in the dressing room um, shopping and pull out her checkbook and on the deposit slips on the back of it had me try on whatever it was we were wing back chair that's it she would sketch out whatever it was I had on and then she'd go home and make it and I was always so jealous of the girls that got to walk into a department store try a dress on and go buy it <laughs> I didn't understand till I was a grown woman how special that was that my mom could just sketch out anything and go home and make it and um, she taught me to sew when I was 10 the only time um, well two times I got sent to the principal's office when I was in grade school one of those was because I wouldn't put a sleeve into a dress the way my home ec teacher wanted me to. I put it in the way my mother taught me. And the teacher got mad and sent me to the principal. And then they called my mom and my mom was like, well, what's wrong with the way she's putting in the sleeves? So, and this is another one of those project sheets. So that's it. I mean, I have lots more, but these were the new releases that I um, actually purchased on the new release. So. I just wanted to take a few minutes and share that with you guys. And um, it sure was ha fun having my uh, savvy sisters here with me this afternoon. It puts a big smile on my face. Thank you so much for joining me. And again, I would love it if you would um, check out my website, check out my uh, like and um Follow me on Facebook and head on over to YouTube and subscribe over there. I'm really, really working hard on my YouTube. So uh, your aunt could sew that way. I think, you know, I got, I was taught how to sew on a Singer Trendle sewing machine. I have, I have one of those old machines here and I have one up in my um, family room. But that's what I was taught to sew on. And when I got into uh, junior high, well, it was early junior high, um, we had electric sewing machines. And I would tell my mom all the time how much I loved those electric sewing machines. And then for my graduate, my eighth grade graduation, my mom sold her trundle machine, which had been her mother's, and bought me an electric sewing machine for my eighth grade graduation. And you know, that was just, I don't know, that just still speaks to my heart that my mom did that for me. And so that's probably why I collect these silly sewing machines because um, I just have such a, it just makes me think of my mom. So get a little verklempt over that. So uh, Cecile, thank you so much for being a follower. I appreciate it. You guys have been wonderful. I won't keep you anymore. You guys have a great evening, and thanks so much for spending an hour with me. I appreciate it so much. And if you liked it, sprinkle it around. Help me out. You guys have a great evening. Bye.